me start over and introduce myself. <laughs> I'm Tammy Frankenberger, and I'm here tonight with my twin sister, Tanya, Tanya Jacks, and we are going to do this together, although she's going to take the primary role very soon. She's going to do our tutorial for us. I've been a part of Young Living for about five years, and I love every single aspect of it. I've gotten into a little bit of this and a little bit of that, try to touch all the products in one shape or fashion, um, uh, but I'm learning something new every day. And the savvy stuff has been super exciting. And as we have gotten more colors, I've really been thrilled. I've recently gotten the new blush color and it's the Charisma, which Tanya's gonna talk about tonight. And it's a little more pinky and I've really loved that. And I recently won the mascara. And so I've gotten to try that, which I absolutely love. And some of the new lip colors, it's just been so fun to play with. So I am going to not take any more of your time because Tanya has so much information. Throughout this tutorial, I'm gonna to try to ask questions uh, that she may prompt her to say things that she may have forgotten because she's got a lot she's trying to cover. But if you have a question tonight, be sure to type it in the chat box and I'll shout it out to Tanya. Or if you wanna hold it to the end, we may have uh, some time for some Q&A at the end. But um, this is my savvy sister and I go to her for all my savvy advice and she's got a lot to um, share with us tonight. So I'm gonna hand it over. This is Tanya. Thank you so much, Tammy. I appreciate that very much. We are partners in crime and love doing classes and tutorials together. So we do have a lot to cover tonight. Um, I want to start off by saying that when I became a Young Living member about five years ago, my journey started off um, looking radically different than it does now, thankfully. I was in a really low point in my life and just in a lot of chronic pain and I started bringing the oils in and then I brought in the new charrette and then let's see, I, the sulfur zyme and some of the um, supplements and then finally moved to deodorant here, you know, the hair products and never really brought in the skincare though. So I went to beauty school like a year and a half ago and it was there that I realized what phenomenal skincare products we had. And you know, I was just, I had already switched over to so many things natural in my life and had transitioned to so many things that it made sense to go ahead and bring in the skincare. So I got a bunch of the skincare and then I started thinking, what about my makeup? So when makeup came out last June, it just went full circle to having, you know, head to toe, I felt like I am really cleaning up my life and it takes time. So if you're on this video and you're new or this call and you're new, don't be discouraged because it does take time. Five years in, I'm still making those switches. So I want to mention to you a few things before we get started. And I do have a few notes. So if you see me kind of wander off, that's what's going on because we have a lot of new products that I'm not super familiar with yet. So I have to refer to a few notes. But before we get started, I want to tell you two things. One is um, this tutorial is my skincare routine and my savvy beauty routine. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. So please experiment, find your way, find what, work, what works for you. But I do get asked a lot, what, what is it that I do? So I thought, let's just do a tutorial. Now, until the product came out last June, I barely wore blush and mascara and lip gloss and foundation. I had never done really eyeshadow or eyeliner. Definitely none of this glitter dust stuff and, you know, highlighters, bronzers. That was like not even in my vocabulary. So I'm very new at this. And uh, everything that I learned, you can learn as well. And I got it off two websites or two Facebook groups I want to mention to you. So here is the name of them. The first one is called The Savvy Mess. And that is run by Melissa Pepping, and she actually created all of this makeup. The other one is called Inside Out Dash, little dash, Natural Savvy Beauty. And both of those, you absolutely can go on there and learn everything that I've learned. I, I like I said, did not know any of this until I watched some of those videos and just practice, honestly. So if I can do it, you can do it. And somehow, because I jumped right in and practiced, 
people come to me for questions, but I am no more experienced than the average person on the street. So I'm not a professional. Just let's get that straight. I'm not going to go over all the ingredients and the products that we're talking about because I've done that in another video and I'll attach that to um, in the Facebook groups where you found this, I'll attach that video when we're finished. But some of the new products, I am going to go over some of those ingredients because they are so new. A lot of people don't know about them. If you have questions, if you can hold them till the end, that'd be great. We're going to open up the call for question and answer. And if you also can tap, type them in the chat box as we go along, and that way we'll have them in there in case you don't want to ask them at the end. And uh, lastly, I want to tell you that I'm going to be using a lot of product. And you might be thinking, I could never get that much product, or I could never afford that much product. So let me just fill you in on a couple of things that will help you. One is, if you're not on Essential Rewards, ask the person that invited you to this call about that, because that program is what gives me a bunch of points, and I cash those in for free product, and I spend it on my skincare and makeup most of the time. The other thing is, these products last anywhere from two to 12 months, honestly. So they go a long way and you can invest over time and build up your little arsenal. You're gonna see me do this a lot because I have to flip my notes. All right, so tonight I have already done the steps that I'm going to walk you through as far as the skincare goes because I didn't wanna take up the time doing that and getting my hands wet and messing everything up here. So I'm just going to go through my routine really quick and then we'll get to the makeup. So what I use now as of last month, because we just came out with some great new products, and Tammy, be sure and stop me if you have any questions along the way, because I may forget a few things. I use the, um, to take my makeup off, I am in love with this new product. It's called Mira Luminous cleansing hair oil. And it is full of essential oils. It has sandalwood, rose, bergamot, Roman chamomile, ylang ylang, geranium, lemon, coriander, and jasmine. It's a lot of oils. Talk about some good skin supporting stuff right there. Plus it has jojoba and argon. And those are great carrier oils that provide fatty acid and antioxidants. And so your skin loves that, it needs that may seem counterproductive to wash your face with oil. But if you use the right oil, it really does make a difference. And over like in Europe and Switzerland, they, they do this. Like this is very common practice in their spas and things like that and in their everyday, everyday um, skincare routine. So it's common and I'm glad that we're bringing it into our beauty lineup. Now, you don't wanna wash your face with coconut oil. That will clog your pores. But the oil that's in this product is very good for your skin. And it really helps to remove all the junk that gets stuck in your, in your pores. The oil helps draw it out, but it also gives you, it doesn't strip you of your natural oils that you need. So it's a very gentle and mild process, and I love that. It is loaded with hydration, and it's good for all skin types. So the way that you use it is you just would apply like two to three pumps, comes with the pump, and then you just... Um, you may have to start with like a warm water on your face or just wet your hands, you know, before you put the oil in it and then you just take off your makeup. Now, a lot of people like to massage it for about a minute because your face, it loves to be massaged. Um, Tammy, I just realized, do I need to be on the uh, active speaker so people can see what I'm showing? You need to be on spotlight video where the video doesn't ever go off of you. Do you do that? As the host, let's see. I'm going to let you look at that for a minute while I keep chalking. Switch to active speaker. I'm clicking spotlight video. Here we go. Okay. So, in case you didn't see this, this is what we're talking about. I just realized that. <laughs> anyway, okay, as we were saying, 
a few pumps on your hand and you want to massage it in. So your face loves to be massaged because that brings all the oxygen to the surface and that is so good for your skin and for that youthful appearance we're trying to create to oxygenate your skin. And by rubbing it or by massaging it, you're doing that. So let's go over just a few little techniques on how to touch your, your face when you're applying any kind of product. It's good if you can use these two fingers because they're the most gentle, but if you have to throw that third one in there, that's fine. Try to leave this guy out because he's a lot firmer and you want to be soft and gentle. So you just try to, you know, massage, massage the product in. When you get to your eyes, try not to go that, do this. Try not to pull on your eyes. You always want to go inward in circular motions to get that eye makeup off. And anytime you can just pat, that's even better. And don't forget to always apply any product like moisturizer to the back of your hands, to your neck and chest. And I guess that's it. Those three places because they show age quite a bit and you don't have like a 30 year old face and a 70 year old neck. It's just not going to work. So there's also a new, um, a new product that Young Living just came out with, which is poppy seed um, exfoliator for your lips. And I can't wait to get some of that. But in the meantime, everything you do when we talk about toning and exfoliating and moisturizing, just treat your lips like you would anything else on your face because they need love too. And they will show age as well. If I don't knock something over in this call, we will be blessed. Okay, so the cleansing oil is like your first step to removing all of the makeup. And then I use the new Orange Blossom Facial Wash. They have had this before, but this has been reformulated. It has new packaging and it comes with pump. And one pump is literally all you need. It's very lathery. You, you would just uh, add water to that and it, it really creates a nice lather. This is now gluten-free and it was not before. So that's one of the new um, the new formulations. They have, it has lavender, lemon, rosemary, copaiba, and patchouli. This is for normal to oily skin. I do know people that have dry skin that use this as well, but this is especially formulated for normal to oily skin. It has botanical extracts like St. John's wort, kelp, rose flower, orange peel, apple extract. It has 13 different botanical extracts in it besides all of the essential oils. The key ingredient though, that really makes this a very um, great product for combating oily skin is copaiba. Uh, also, it also helps with breakout and oily skin. So copaiba and then um, Aussie, the, the Aussie oil, A-C-A-I, and then the Endorobo. Those three things is what really, is the really the key ingredients for this product. It's, of course, dermatologist tested, and I love that. It's made for sensitive skin. So if you, you know, if you feel like you have sensitive skin, this is definitely made for that. It's great for teens and adults. So get your teens started on this. I think I've heard a lot of people talk about how much it improves their skin, uh, even before it was reformulated. So it doesn't have any of the yucky stuff, of course. You know, none of our products do, like the sulfates and the phthalates. It's all 100% derived from plant-based ingredients. And if you are prone to breakouts and um, acne or you have prior acne, you know, even before now, and maybe you have some scarring or some marking because of that, I wanna mention that we have a new product called Maximum, Maximum Strength Acne Treatment. And it has been, um, it has been, it's met the FDA standards to be classified as an over-the-counter acne treatment medication. And it's 100% plant-based, doesn't have any chemicals, but it's, it's uh, and that's a big deal for a product like that to not have any chemicals in it. It not only clears up blemishes, blackheads, and pimples, but it also helps in the healing at the same time. So if you have previous scarring and stuff like I mentioned, it can help. It can help with that. It can help healing and help prevent any new breakouts. So I want to say that a lot of people have already used this product. They were in the, like the trial run with Young Living and saw great results. 
Young Living would not ever put out a product that they did not test first and have good results. But I don't have anybody on my team that's used it. So if you use it and you get good results, can you let me know? Because I want, I want some personal testimony. All right, so back to my routine. I do not use the product I just told you about with the acne treatment because I don't, this is the first blemish I've had like this whole year. So I don't, I'm so blessed that I don't have any blemishes, but, um, so I don't use that product. So, but what I do use is a product called um, Satin Mint Facial Scrub. That is the next step. After I cleanse my face twice a week, I will do an exfoliator. This product has been out of stock so I don't have any right now. It just came back in stock and it is in my cart, my ER cart. But what I want to tell you about this product is I love this product because it has the mango butter and peppermint essential oils. And that makes this product divine. When you wash your face with it, it, it just feels like you've just jumped. You're really hot and you jumped into a pool and it's just your face is so cool. Literally cool. You're cool too. But anyway, it's really, really nice. I love it. And you know why it's really important is because it sloughs off the dead skin cells and brings the new one to the surface. So ladies, if you're walking around with dead skin cells, you're not gonna look younger. Just saying. So you need to get some of this exfoliating scrub and it lasts a long time as well. And it's, it's probably the least expensive thing we have. I think it's like $16 and you'll, you'll love it. So after I use, and like I said, I don't have any to show you, but after I use the exfoliator twice, I'm going to use that twice a week, I will use the toner. So I toned my skin, did not do that for last June, but toning is really important because it helps, it helps clean out your pores and it also restores the pH balance, which makes your skin um, an even tone. So you really want to have an even toned skin. So that's what toning does. This toner is made with lemon, melissa, royal Hawaiian sandalwood, and frankincense. It's very nourishing and it smells so good. I love what it smells. And here's a trick to make this last longer. This, um, I, you probably can't see, but this, I feel like the hole is really big and you waste a lot of product. So a friend of mine told me about this little trick and I love it. I put mine in a spray bottle. I spray my face a couple of times and then I take my cotton pad and take off the residue. I don't spray the cotton pad first because it absorbs so much of the product that I feel like I lose a lot of it. Anyways, by spraying it and not having it come out of the hole, I save a lot of product. So, watch you not like to move that. All right, so we're, we're up to the moisturizer. Young Living has a new moisturizer that just came out. It's the Orange Blossom. Again, they have three new Orange Blossom items. The cleanser, the moisturizer, which looks like this. I know it seems really small, but a little bit goes a long way with this product again. And I, I love this. I use this in the morning. It's really light and it really helps control oil. Excuse me. So it has some of the same ingredients that the other Orange Blossom Facial Wash has, but what it has that's a little bit different is licorice root extract and microalgae. And those two things have been studied to reduce oil and blemishes. So that's really cool. I use this in the morning before I put my makeup on, but at night, I use this. It's sandalwood moisturizing cream. It's really, I don't think you can see that. It's very thick and very creamy and very rich. And my skin, it just seems to do really well with having a lighter moisturizer in the morning and a really um, thick one at night. And I have just, I just have normal skin, not oily or dry. Now, the last thing that I use in my skincare routine a couple of times a week is I use a product I don't have here to show you because I just ran out last week. It's the Art Cream Mask. What I love about this is it's not like your traditional mask. You can actually sleep in it. And I love that. It makes it so easy. It's really velvety and soft. And I just apply a thin layer, my hands, neck, chest, and face. And I sleep in it. And the next day, I just wash it off. And it, it actually just soaks into your skin and 
if you didn't wash it off, it, it wouldn't even, you wouldn't even know that you had it on, honestly. So I absolutely love that. I bought that at convention last June and I just ran out last week. So it's been over a year that product lasts me using it two times a week. You see what I mean? These products go a long way. I hope my internet's going okay. I keep, like I freeze up a few times. No? Okay. Okay. So before we move on to the makeup tutorial, I want to point out the last thing that is the last item that's new in the Orange Blossom line. And I'm so excited about this. Probably of everything. This is the most of, of, of all of the skincare. It is charcoal bar soap. A lot of people, um, they just like a bar soap. They don't want to use a cleanser, a liquid cleanser. They like a bar soap. So I'm glad we have one now. And it's charcoal activated. Look, it's black. And this is, it's twice the size, but I cut some off for samples to share with friends, right? It smells so amazing. It smells more amazing than any of the other Orange Blossom products. It smells really strong, really orange blossomy. Um, so what charcoal does is it acts like a magnet that draws out the dirt and the oil in a way that is different than the other cleanser. It's super powerful. And it is especially designed for, of course, blemish prone skin. You can use it on your body or your face. And also, um, kids can use this, like two years old and up, I think. Not that you would, but you could. <laughs> Not that they're that dirty. But if they uh, but it's very safe for the family to use. If you put it in the, you know, in the shower, the family can use it too. The soap has uh, the same ingredients I talked about before, but it also has sunflower seed oil and wolfberry oil and then oat bran, which acts like a little natural exfoliator. So I love that. Okay, well that didn't take so long. All right, let's move on to the fun stuff. Now, I know that you guys are like, really wanna to get to the makeup, but I really, really need to stress that this makeup does not look nearly as good if you don't have a nice palette um, to put it on. So the skincare part is really important. That's why I wanted to touch on that. So, I have already applied my primer. We have primer now. That's really a success this year. Um, the primer that we have is we have two primers. We have hydrating primer and a mattifying primer. The reason that primer is so important is because it's a lot like um, when you paint a house. The paint actually, uh, the primer actually acts as a base, and so the paint goes on better and it stays on longer. So it's our foundation goes on smoother, it stays on longer. And it also helps fill in any lines or pores or imperfections on our face. So I love the primer. I've already put on the mattifying primer. The mattifying primer is for oily to norm normal skin. The hydrating primer is for dry skin. So they're both loaded with essential oils that support that skin type. And you would just apply a thin layer all over your face or just in the T-zone. A lot of people just like to put it in the zones where they you know, collect the most, the most oil. So your chin, nose, and forehead. All right, the next thing I want to mention before we actually jump in is the misting spray. If you're new to using these products, you need to know that the misting spray is vital with the foundation. Like it was made, they were made to go together, big time. Not that you would never use it without it, but they really work well together. So the missing spray and having a good foundation brush are going to be your two top components for having a good outcome with this foundation. The misting spray, it helps um, the foundation in the fact that it helps the pigments to bind together and to last longer onto your skin. It actually has a, a different feel and a different color even when you use the missing spray than when you don't. It has uh, geranium, lavender, cedarwood, and rose. It's very nourishing and it smells absolutely fantastic. Like, what do we have that doesn't smell fantastic, right? I don't know why I have to say that because you should know. Okay, concealer. We don't actually have a concealer yet, and we don't actually have liquid foundation yet. But I have it on good word that we will next year because by this time next year, we will be, we will have everything that a full cosmetic company has, everything. We won't have maybe the blue mascara, 
you know, the off the wall kind of fun stuff, but we'll have all the basics. And to us, the basic thing is the concealer and the liquid foundation, right? So we'll have that this time, make sure that's what I'm hearing. Alrighty, so there's a couple of ways that you can apply the foundation. We're gonna, we're gonna do the concealer first though. We don't have a concealer, but you can, you can uh, improvise. Tammy, how are we doing? You have any questions so far? We are doing great. I loved hearing about that charcoal faucet. I was very curious about that. And that is on my next PR order. You'll love it. Okay. So, just like everything, over time you'll learn different ways and different techniques uh, to do different. I feel like my computer might be going dead, but maybe not. Okay different ways to do different techniques. And so this is um, this is where I'm at right now. This is what I'm doing right now, because I was doing something different the last video, but I learned a new trick that a good friend of mine, Stacy, taught me. So, some people, they will spray their brush a couple of times. Hang on, let me get prepared. I use cool number one, foundation. So you pour your foundation, what you think you'll need, into your cap. That's kind of how you get started. It, it just works out better when you put it in your cap. And then some people will spray their brush a couple of times, pick up the foundation and apply it. But a friend of mine said she likes it better and I love it much better by actually spraying your cap. It's sometimes better if you do spray it first. <laughs> then the foundation doesn't fly up but spray your cap a couple of times with your foundation in it and then pick it up that way. It goes on, it just goes on differently and I don't know why. Anyway, the first thing we're gonna do is conceal. So I'm gonna pick up quite a bit of a, a product. Probably can't really see it on the brush, but, and I'm gonna just dab the places I want to conceal. And I have a little mirror over here, so I may have to come like back and forth. So. Anyway, that's one place. The other one is over here. I have one little spot over here. So anyways, I just kind of get that more of an even tone. I'm gonna get a little more foundation. Spray my lid again. Should have done that first one. <laughs> Usually I'll spray it first, but hey, it's not on camera, so of course I'm gonna do something silly. Okay, then you just, you know, that's kind of set now. It doesn't take long for it to dry. And I'm just gonna kind of buff over it and just circular motions cover my entire face. Everybody has their own technique, their own rhyme and reason. So. Tanya, do you feel like when you spray the lid that when you apply it, I guess, is it more wet than when you just spray the brush? I don't necessarily know that it's more wet. It just goes on smoother for some reason. I know that sounds really strange. I feel like I don't use as much product. And you can tell that I, I've just, I've got a lot of product up in my brush. So I'm just really, you know, circular motions until it come, until I feel like it's all covered nice and even. And it doesn't hurt if you feel like you just need a little more coverage to continue. Your brush is um, still moist, so you're still getting a lot of the effect of the misting spray in there. And I'm just going to, the less spray you use, you can see that you use even more product. I know the spray helps the product to go on, um, just to, to distribute it better and not use as much. If you want a really, I'm just gonna do a really quick savvy look. If you want a really heavy look, you know, you can comply, you can continue to build it and apply more and more layers. But I'm happy with that. Just, I feel like it's a very nice, that the, the primer helps it to be more of a, a smoother finish. And I feel like it really does that. So, and a lot of people that apply this makeup, they, 
And they will feel like, at first, they'll feel like, well, I don't feel like I have anything on because it's so light. I mean, seriously, you don't feel like you have anything on. But then it all, it all sort of ties together and comes together the more that you apply as far as the more, the more products we're about to apply, not the more foundation. So I would say just if it's your first time to use it, just put it on and um, know that you kind of have to get used to it a little bit. I did want to say that a lot of people like liquid foundation. So I would encourage you to do what I just did and try it that way first because a lot of people, and I mean, I've taught a lot of classes, they end up loving it that way, okay? Even when they thought they wouldn't. But if you really are just diehard wanting to make a liquid foundation, here's what you can do. After you try it that way, try it that way first. You might be surprised. You can take your cap, you can take your moisturizer and put a couple of um, squirts in here and then add your foundation and just use a Q-tip or even your finger or whatever and just make it to where it's a creamy foundation and then apply it with your brush like I just did. That's how you can get a liquid foundation. You can use, you can use the sandalwood moisturizing cream if you want. It's very thick. It makes a very thick, tasty foundation. You can use the orange blossom moisturizer as well to make a, a thinner um, consistency. I'm trying to think if there was one more way to do it. And it may come to me. Foundation brush is amazing from Young Living. It has short little bristles that are very stout. They don't give way. They're very, they're very stout. And um, a lot different than this. <laughs> See the difference? You want short and thick, not fluffy and big. This is for your all over veil, which we're gonna go over later. So the brush is important. Invest in a good brush. It's gonna make or break this application. Young Living's brushes are made in Italy, and you probably will never have to buy another brush set again. They are amazing, and you will know and feel the difference. I used to use the same brush. It was $2.99 for everything, okay? I'm telling you, I've got brush experience. <laughs> These are different, I promise. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do next is bronzer, and I love this product. I didn't at first because I didn't know what I was doing and I was honestly a little bit afraid of it. But now it's just my friend. Sometimes this is all I wear is bronzer. I'm going to take this and what I'm wearing is um, Crown All Over, which is I think the lighter of the, there's two bronzers. I just pour a little bit in the cap. Take my brush that's labeled bronzer. Isn't that just genius? And it, it's got a little angle to it. So it makes it really nice to, uh, to bronze with. I just get a little bit of product. And, oh, I got too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of, you can use anything. I'm just using the, the end of the, because I put too much in here, so I can't use that. But I'm just using something to kind of get, you can even use your hand. I use that for a palette a lot. Get rid of the excess. So where you would bronze is your cheekbone or under your cheeks. You want to start like at the mid ear and come down halfway, you know, just halfway. You don't have to be real precise. And then a lot of people like to bronze up here in the hairline, kind of gives you a sun-kissed look, and on the tip of your nose. Some people even like to bronze on the side of their nose, on their jaw, on their neck. That's advanced. We're not going to do that tonight. But I'll show you what I do. Let's see. I'll start with my... I need to do this, sorry. Start with my forehead. And I like that to get nice and sun-kissed. You can see it's just a nice little glow. I don't know if the light in here is good enough for you to see that. I also like to do the tip of my nose. I do the most on the tip of my nose and on my forehead because I believe that that is the prettiest look. That, that just really ties it all together. Get a little bit more. Yeah, I just did the tip of my nose. I thought somebody was crazy when they first told me that, but I really like the look in those models that you see on TV that just look so polished and tied together. It's the nose. 
So I just do a little bit right under my cheekbone. On both sides. And literally I'll put on lip gloss. I'll do my, I do my, um, my eyebrows and a little bit of mascara and I can just do that look. It's just a very natural look, I feel like. So that is bronzing. It's very easy. Just dab your cheekbones, nose, and forehead. You're ready to bronze. Okay. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and get the eyebrows over with. Young Living has a product called Multitasker. It's amazing. Now I have it in a little travel pod because that's just what I grabbed tonight. But it comes in a container about this big and it'll last you like five years, seriously. Because <laughs> you don't have to use very much. At convention, this is, um, there's different shades. I forget what this is called, brown, dark brown maybe? There's like light brown, uh, I should have wrote, up, wrote down the shades. There's four different shades of, 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 um, of multitask for now, not just one. And so that's really awesome because we all have different colored eyebrows, right? Multitasker is called that because it's good for different things. You can use it for your eyebrows, you can use it for eyeliner. Some people even use it for lip liner. Some people will take this and mix it in with their foundation in the summer to get a darker look. That's really neat. I have it, um, I have heard people even take the darker shade and mix their foundation in it to get a lighter, but now we have different shades, so you wouldn't really have to do that. Oh, you can also use it for eyeshadow and eyeliner. Forgot about that. Eyeshadow, eyeliner, lip liner, and brow pencil. Okay, so wish me luck. As you can see, I don't have any eyebrows, and you're going to see how few I have once I do one side. <laughs> so I have learned a trick with the eyebrows. First of all, be patient with yourself, because this is one thing you will have to practice on. It doesn't come overnight. So I start in the middle. You guys can see this. Probably not. You'll see it on the other one, I guess. I start in the middle, and I sort of build outward. So I just do little short strokes and kind of get the um, the shape of it started. I don't do it um, wet, but you can if you want a really drastic look. But I'm just doing it dry. And your eyebrows are supposed to be sisters, not twins. So don't fret if they don't look exactly alike. You probably won't. I never do. And then I'll start in towards the front. Yes, ma'am? Would you say that you're picking up a very tiny amount with that brush or a lot on that brush? Minute, and then I'm even blowing it after that. Minute amount. It's just I don't have a lot in there, so I'm having to scrape the bottom. Very small amount, though. Because it's going on so nicely, that color, it makes it look like you're using a lot um, yeah. to get it there. Yeah. But I just take, you want to take it slow and easy because once you, once you do it, and you know, there's really no turning back. You're going to have to start over. Everything is very forgiving, but this is um, something that you'll pretty much have to start over. So. <laughs> Big difference there, huh? I can see it looks beautiful though. I, I think you do a really nice job getting the arch and everything. Well, try doing it on camera. Not the easiest. Anyway, I could spend a long time on that, but you get the idea. And um, where the arch starts and the height of the arch, um, there's a learning curve with that as well. So eyebrows is not something I can teach you about on this little short video. It is something though that you'll want to invest a little time in because as you can see, it does, it does <laughs> make or break the look sometimes. 
Now, even if you have nice eyebrows, it's still good to fill them in because they could be sparse or, you know, thin in certain areas. And a, and a nice eyebrow really, really ties it all together. It's all about the eyebrows, I promise you. You'll see that when you start playing around with it a little bit. And at first, she'll be like, whoa, you know, because it's just a lot. But then, then you'll get used to it, and then you'll wonder how you ever got along without eyebrows. By the way, inquiring minds would like to know where you find those little travel pods because that's nice to take with you on vacation. Yeah, it is. Um, and you can also share with friends. That's a nice thing too. You can share some of your product with friends. I get them on Amazon. Very inexpensive. Almost done. While you're finishing that, obviously you have all of the savvy brushes. Do you clean the brushes a certain way or with a certain product? I keep freezing up. Y'all see that? Is that just me? It was very brief. Do I clean the brushes? Yes, clean your brushes like every other day or at least a couple of times a week, if you can. And I clean them with just these household cleaner. Okay, I'm really actually doing this on video. Very different, you see? <laughs> this is gonna be a funny first for me, but it's okay. Cause we're just playing around tonight. If you only see the setup I have here, you would know that this is not my normal setup. I'm having to rig things up for you guys. What is the name or type of brush you're using for your eyebrows? <laughs> It's going to drive me crazy. This is Young Living's it's the eyeliner brush. They did make an eyebrow brush. Or do they? No, this is it. This is the eyeliner. One, one end is eyeliner and one end is eyebrow. But I like to use the eyeliner side. But I'm sure you guys can see the difference there. <laughs> one arch is a little bit higher than the other. <laughs> but it's okay for tonight's demonstration. I'm telling you it's okay, but inside, <laughs> inside I'm dying. <laughs> okay, you guys are just gonna have to use your imagination and forgive me, I don't wanna be here all night. But as you can see, my arch is a little off on one of them. So next up, we are going to, but you can see the big difference. I needed eyebrows desperately. All righty. Now I'm going to do the eyeliner. I don't know if you do your eyeshadow or eyeliner first, but tonight I'm going to do the eyeliner first. I don't hardly ever wear eyeliner, so bear with me. <laughs> I'm going to use Jet Setter, and again, I have it in a little pod, and we can have brown eyeliner, which is the multitasker, or black, which is Jet Setter. Very, very black. So I like to wet, I like to put it on wet, so I'm just going to run it under some water in my sink, because the misting spray is so tiny, I feel like I'm wasting the misting spray, and then I'm just going to kind of dry it off on the back of my hand a little bit, and I am literally just picking up some stuff that's already in the cap because it doesn't this does not take a whole lot either and just get as close to the lash line as possible and this is pretty forgiving if you mess up you can always cover this up with eyeshadow And um, I'm not going to put a whole lot on tonight because I'm just doing a very simple look. And I've even done this on the other videos with my eyeshadow already on. And so it, it's very easy to work with. And I love using the end of this brush that I use with the... Um, I am 
coughing. I hope my internet holds up for this call. I'm not sure what's going on. I'm not noticing any pauses. If it's okay. very brief. Good to know. All right, a little bit more. I'm almost finished here. It's got a little more product. And the preference of whether you put this on wet or dry is up to you, but if you do put it on dry, I mean, you may have some fallout because it's, um, it's very, um, it's powder, you know, and so you may have some fallout. And what I'll do with that is I just take a big brush and I will just wipe it away. Because if you do that, you're going to smudge it, mess up your makeup. So I'm going to do just a little bit on the lower lid as well. And I don't like to take mine all the way over. I just do it um, halfway or just really on the outer corner. I did want to tell you guys something pretty exciting. I am, um, well, hang on, let me do this. Can't talk while I do this. So I just have a little bit, just sort of at the corner there to give me a little color under my eyes. But I could put on mascara right now and just have my look, you know, and not, I don't even have on blush yet or finishing veil or any of the other products, but I feel like I could get by with this nice summer look with that. I was going to let you know that, um, that I'm getting ready to learn some new techniques on how to do winged eyeshadow. I mean, I mean winged eyeliner and some really dramatic eyes. And we'll be coming to you with that next. That'll be fun class. Hey, Tanya. Uh, yes. Stacy says that she does a trick with her eyeliner. And she puts it on dry and then wets her brush and goes back over with a wet brush. Oh, I've never thought of doing that. That's a good idea. Very good idea. I'll have to try that. Okay. Super excited about this next product. This is our eyeshadow palette. It's our first set of pressed eyeshadow. It's gorgeous. The eyeshadows before were loose powder and they came in pods like this. And they were uh, messy and they have some beautiful colors. But, uh, and they last forever. They'll probably last longer than this, honestly. So there are some beautiful colors. I don't know, there's probably at least 15 different colors. But I'm gonna use this tonight because it's brand new and I'm super excited about it. So this is our pressed eyeshadow. And the colors here are, starting right here with the charcoal, it's um, Ambition, which is a very deep charcoal. And then you have Timeless, which is mauve. Elegant, which is bronze, bronzy shimmer, cheek, it's a rose, and then you have Charm, which is a cream shimmer. So again, we're just going to go with a very simple look. I love that I'm going to run out of this first. This is the cream. It's called Charm, and um, it's very pretty. It's the one that's on the very end. Yeah, right there. So I'm just going to put it all over my lid. Did that palette come with the brush or an applicator? No, it comes with the mirror, but no brush. No applicator. So are you using a brush that came in the setting and I'll fit? Yes, this is the eyeshadow brush that came in this, and I, I meant to grab the, um, it comes with a beautiful case that has holds all your brushes. So the initial brush set, I'll tell you, it comes with the overall veil brush, the eyeshadow brush, your foundation brush, your bronzing brush, and your blush brush. It comes with all five of these brushes and a beautiful carrying case for $85. And then you can buy some, some brushes separately. Oh, and it also comes with a blending brush, six brushes. So I've just put that all over my lid. And the next color I'm gonna use that I really love, I have a hard time choosing, but I'm gonna go with this, um, this second one here, right there. 
mauve shimmer. And uh, you don't need a whole lot, you really don't. This goes a long way. And um, so I will show you something that I learned recently. To apply it to my overall lid, I just used the brush that came with the, with the, uh, the brushes, that came with the brush set. It's more of a dense brush. And the other brush is, this is something that I just got at the store because I really like a fluffier brush to do the crease. And I'm hoping that Young Living's gonna come out with a fluffier brush. So for now, I have this brush. So I am going to do my crease. And like I said, I'm not a pro with this and I don't have any fancy techniques, but one thing that someone has taught me is to um, my shape of eyes, which are a little more, I don't have a huge um, palette to work with. So instead of closing my eye and putting it right in the crease, I keep it open and I, and I just do small circular motions right above, um, right above the crease, if that makes sense. And you just, you just kind of keep, keep doing the circular motions until you build it. Because once you, once you just do that, you've got eyeshadow there. And you can tone it down, definitely with foundation. But it's just easier if you go slow and just kind of build it with circular motions. Is that showing up okay, Tammy? Yes, it is. I, I'm always amazed at um, how little it takes to start showing up. Yeah, I only dip it in there one time, and I don't even, I don't even, um, you know, dip, I don't even get a lot of product. So, uh -oh. okay. So literally, that's just two colors, and I could definitely go with that for the day. Or I'm going to pick up um, a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and, and do the third, the third, the middle color, which is called um, Elegant. And just kind of do a little bit right here in the corner to darken that up just a little bit. Just right in the corner. We have a quick question about the colors. Do you know if Young Living is going to allow us to customize a palette at some point? I don't know, but this is called palette number one. So that tells me there'll be palette number two. <laughs> I do know that they're coming out with more palettes and I don't know if you can customize them, but this is a beautiful palette. Um, I love every single color in here, but that is a good question. That's a good suggestion actually. All right, so next up we want to just take and blend. And that's just very self-explanatory. You just blend all around, blend your colors together. It doesn't take a lot. I guess it depends on how much uh, color you use, but I didn't use a ton. And I feel like those colors are really pretty. So I would like to put on uh, the, oh, I wanted to mention something to you guys about cleaning your brushes. I bought this at the dollar store. It's got like in a uh, one side is a cloth and the other one's like a microfiber cloth, cloth. And that's what I use to, I spray my brush with the misting spray, I mean with a household cleaner. And I'll take the pad and I'll just continue to do that until it runs clean, until the, uh, until there's no more product coming off. And then I will, you know, loosen the washer or just wash it with soap and water. And this is what I use to clean my brushes with. Or any, any microfiber cloth would be great to clean your brushes with. You don't really even need to soak these. And if you do soak them, you want to have them dry like this. Because if you dry them like this, the water is going to run down into that wood and destroy the wood after, after a while. So dry them like that or just don't even, you don't even need to soak them really. Okay, we're going to apply another one of my absolute favorite new products. I cannot believe how many products came out at convention and how many I love, like, love. 
So this is the mascara. It is infused with um, lavender and it has the most rich creamy formula. And you can do two coats of this, but it goes on like butter and I'm not even kidding. And it comes off like butter. A splash of water is it, no residue. It's amazing, but it doesn't, it doesn't like smudge or come off during the day. It's very easy to put on and you can apply different coats to thicken it. And, and I could skits out on my eyes for a while. You guys weren't hanging out with me. I'm gonna get a Q-tip because I did smudge just a little bit. The smudge is coming right off. Anyway. Have you guys tried the mascara yet? You guys can unmute yourself briefly. You've tried the mascara. Type in. What do you think about it, Tammy? I just got it, so I've only had a chance to use it twice, but I do like it a lot. It goes on very smoothly. Yeah. Very moist. This actually came out last convention, but there was some formulation issues. So they had to send it back to the science lab. Anyways, I could apply several more coats and really build it up, but for the sake of time, I'm not going to, but it's very pretty. And also they're coming out with new colors too next. Next convention, right now we just have black, but there'll be new colors. Okay, I forgot to do something before I put my mascara on, but it's okay, we can still, we can still recover. They have a diamond dust, and I like to do this before I put my mascara on, but that's okay. Actually, let me back up. We have a veil, an overall finishing veil, and we have two colors now, another new thing that came out at convention. We have the diamond dust, I'll show you that, it's very, Diamond Dusty. Do you not use your blush first before you put on a... uh, Yeah, let me go back and do that. But sometimes I'll do it the opposite way because um, sometimes I'll just get an overall really good matte finish and then I'll put my blush on and I just do it different ways. But yeah, we'll do the blush first and I'll show you. So actually, probably the easiest way to show you the Diamond Dust. Yeah, you're not gonna be able to see that either. I'll, I'll demonstrate. There we go, on my face, that'd be good. So one is a matte finish and one is kind of like a sparkly finish. Let's do the blush first. The blush that I'm using is Charisma and <laughs> I've tried almost every blush there is to so try to find the pinkest because I just really like pink blush, not any kind of orange tone or rust or anything like that. Um, I like really pink, so this blush is you shut, people. You cannot get any more pink than this. So you only need a smidgen. I have that much in there. That's way too much. Like that'll last me two weeks. Yeah, I'm not kidding. I just get a smidgen on my brush. Find my apples because that's really important. You don't want to just go cattywampus with this blush because it's uh, very shimmery and you'll see it. Got yeah, which pigment? And I do not like a ton of blush, but you can see that pretty good. And you can always get, you can always get a little bit more if you want. But because I only like a tiny, some tiny bit of blush, sometimes I'll um, do the finishing spray or the finishing powder first, and then I'll just do that touch of color at the end. So what I like to do with the diamond dust, because I feel like it's just too sparkly because you've got sparkle in the eyeshadow, you've got sparkle in the, um, the blush. 
I like to, instead of doing it all over, which a lot of people just love that sheen and shine, especially the younger, younger crowd. So there's nothing wrong with that. But I like to take my bronzing blush brush and do a little bit of highlighting. So I just take a minute amount because you will be a shining crystal. And I do it where the sun will kind of hit me. So right here and then on the top of my cheeks. And you really probably cannot see it very well in this video, but when I go out in the sun, you can really see it. And that is really all I do with the diamond dust. And you can use it for eyeshadow if you want. Um, some people mix it in with their foundation and just have an all over shimmer because the foundations are like a flat mat. So let's use the, we're going to use the matte finishing spray. I mean, finishing, finishing powder or veil is what they call it. And that's when you use your big brush or all over brush. You just put a tiny bit in the lid, just like you do with the foundation. And it does not take much of this. And you want to get it up in your brush, because if you have it just sitting on the end, it's going to just, wherever it hits, that's where it's going to go. And just kind of be like an all over. So what's the difference between the matte and the diamond dust? One's matte and one's sparkled. One has a little more sparkle and shine to it, and one is just a very matte finish. They both set your makeup nicely, but one is going to shimmer a lot more than the other. So, you have a quick, savvy look, but we need some lipstick. So, I love the lipstick. We only had, uh, let's see, we had six shades last convention, no, five shades. Now we have 14 shades of lipstick and we only had two lip glosses and now we have six. So we are, we are expanding. And I want to tell you that the lip gloss is infused with peppermint essential oils and it feels so tingly and nice. I love it. And then the lipsticks, they have so many different colors and they have two different types now. So they have this type that looks like this. This is called Mic Drop. And it's really pretty. It's really pink. <laughs> Not all about pink. And um, this has tangerine in it, and it also has uh, beeswax and vitamin E and almond oil. And this one, which we just came out with, so we have we have quite a few neutral shades and then a few really bright ones for summer. But we just came out with quite a few dark shades. This is a really dark one. You can see that called Sirene and it's really dark and I'm going to put it on at the very end and show you that we're not to the end yet. Let me show you this real quick. These are our new colors. See how dark they are? So you've got Icon, Untamed, Posh, Muse, and Sirene. I've heard that Posh is kind of middle of the road um, for the dark colors but they're really pretty and I'm showing you this because these are the newer ones and they're not in the catalog yet. But the other ones are definitely online and they're all online but you can see them in the catalog we have like a virtual i can put the virtual link to the bottom of this video and it'll give you that catalog you can see all the different colors but sometimes i'll put on lip gloss first if i want to change it you can do lip gloss or lipstick first or one without the other there's so many different options and i love that but i'm going to put on mic drop tonight and i already have just a little bit of lip gloss on it's the um the lighter of the two i think that's called embrace but I don't have very much on, so it doesn't really count. And I, I would never have thought I'd wear a color like this. But it's very pretty. And you can, of course, do it much darker if you want to put a few layers on. We also have a lip gloss with this color. I don't have it in there with me. But I'll tone it down with the lip gloss. 
almost out of this. I do have the Embrace lip gloss, and it's just the right amount of color to use by itself. Or it's also great over the lipstick. Yeah. I think the lipstick is such a soft um, lipstick as you apply it. It's just such a soft, it's not a dry feeling at all. I love that. Yeah, it's not. And um, the newer ones even have a uh, just a very different, it has a very, they're both very creamy, but very different. The texture is very different. Obviously, it's more of a stick versus, um, I don't know, it's just different. You see the difference? So Tammy was talking about, the, these are the only two that we used to have. So this one is is um, Abundance, right Tammy? This one I think is Abundant. Yes, uh-huh. And it can be worn, it's got a little bit of color and I will wear this a lot of times by itself, but this is just my favorite. It's almost out, but it's very neutral and it's called Embrace. Very neutral. Now let me show you how dark this, this, this other lipstick is. And you can really, Put it on lightly or, or deep, however you want to apply it. Of course, I'm putting it on over what I already have on. Which I like because it, it's too dark really all by itself. It's very dark. How long does the lipstick last? It, it, last until I eat. Um, it is not with the ones that, you know, stay on forever and ever, but um, I think that it stays on really well and it doesn't ever like get crusty or, you know, how you can get the white, you know, when you, when you, until I eat or wipe it off, it stays on. So when I drink, it doesn't come off. It's just when I, you know, wipe my mouth with a napkin. So there you have it. Do we, I want to, I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. And if you guys have any specific questions, I want you to unmute yourself and feel free to, let's just chat. I believe I caught all the questions in the chat box and asked them as we went. But if anyone else has a question that they've saved to the end, then let's hear it. Can you hear me? Um, yes. Hello. I do have a Hi. question. I can't get on, I can't figure out how to do, I'm listening to you on my phone and watching you on my computer because I couldn't get them to work. So um, um, are you, I don't know if I missed it, but talking about specific colors for individuals, like what works for different people um, as far as foundations go. Uh, like my skin has a lot of reds, so I need yellow to tone it out as far as the, the powder uh, foundation or powder. Can you hear me? Okay. Tanya, I think you're muted. Oh, did it work now? Okay, whoever was asking the question, can you hear Tanya? Because I can't hear her. Okay, now you can hear me. Sorry, I was trying, can you hear me? I'm sorry. I was trying to find you. So I was messing with the view so I could actually see who was talking, but you might be on your cell phone, like you said. So I am so sorry. Can you repeat your question one more time? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm on my cell. Um, so are you going to, uh, I might've missed it to talk about the color of foundation for different people. Okay. We did, you didn't miss it. We did not talk about, okay. Um, there are some different, there are some different ways that you can kind of tell what color you might be. So one thing is, um, on those two Facebook groups, did you hear those that I, that I listed? The which group? The two Facebook groups? Um, I, I'm not sure. Okay. One's called Inside Out Dash Natural Savvy Beauty. And on there, they have some tips on how to guess what shade that you are. Um, but if you, if I know that if you, um, 
tan, like during, if you tan easier, then you're probably a warm shade. And if you tend to burn when you're out in the sun, you're probably a cool shade. That's one way to know. Also, if you wear silver jewelry versus gold jewelry, jewelry, I think gold jewelry is warm and silver is cool. But there's a few different little tri tri trips, ticks, <laughs> tips. Oh my God. <laughs> But you can learn on that Facebook group. But um, okay, does that help? Does that help you? It does. I'm real red, so I use yellow to calm down the red usually. Okay, you'd probably be a warm. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Okay, yeah. okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You are welcome. This and is Catherine. I have a question on the. What was the first website that you mentioned? It was the savvy mess. What's the last word? Mess, like it's a mess. M E S S. Okay, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, and I have the uh, Maven lip gloss. It's wonderful. Very pretty. Yeah. Yes. I don't have that one yet. I have almost every one but that one. So I have to try that one. It's good. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm not much of a makeup person. I, I never, I did not care about what was ever, whatever was in Salt Walgreens and I hardly, it was not important to me at all. And then this makeup has been fun. It really has. And I'm just in a whole new world. I don't wear a lot of makeup either, but I wear bare minerals right now. So I'm used to doing minerals sort of the same application. Right. So I haven't gotten into the, I've fairly new to thin living. Okay. I haven't gotten into the makeup yet. Okay, well you will enjoy it, I think. I'm sure I will. Does anyone else have any other questions? Well, I don't want to keep you guys on Sunday night. So if you think of anything, you can reach out to me on Facebook. You can just private message me. Um, you saw my name in the Facebook group, I'm sure, wherever you saw this link. And so feel free to reach out and ask any questions you want. I'll be happy to answer them. And we'll post this recording, too, after the call's over. Thank you, Tammy, so much for helping me. Thank you, Stacey.